belching and burping after meals. This is one of the more common symptoms I see with the patients who come to work with me and students in FODMAP Freedom. So let's finally do a video about it. Why are you belching and burping so much after your meals and what can you do about it? First things first, I'm gonna talk about the really low hanging fruit real quick before we get into the nitty gritty. If you are drinking soda or other carbonated beverages like seltzer water, that is going to be a major contributing cause to this problem. So for some of you, not many, but some of you, it might be as simple as just eliminating soda or eliminating seltzer water and that this problem will miraculously go away. But if you're consuming a bunch of gas bubbles in your beverages, it's not gonna be surprising that they want to escape in the form of a burp. So now that that one's out of the way, let's get into what probably most of you wanna hear about, which is what I see happen with my patients who have SIBO and IBS and gut health problems and what I have found actually works really well for this problem. But first, as always, I wanna review a teeny bit of normal physiology and anatomy so that we know what we're talking about and why the stuff I'm gonna tell you about actually works. So remember, if you will, the part of your digestive system we're talking about primarily is the upper GI tract, so the esophagus, the stomach, and the first part of the small intestine. So you eat food, it goes in through your mouth, you swallow it and it goes down through the esophagus and it arrives in the stomach. It has to pass through a sphincter, which is a little band of muscle that's like a ring. It has to pass through a sphincter at the top of the stomach. And then when it arrives in the stomach, the stomach is going to digest that food with acid and enzymes. So you should have a truckload of very strong acid in your stomach. And that's gonna do the hard work, the heavy lifting of digesting your food, and breaking it up into something that is actually absorbable, a mush that is called chyme. So once the stomach mushes it all together with the acid and the enzymes, then the chyme is gonna go through another sphincter right here, and it's gonna pass into the small intestine. Now, the, the things that I think contribute to this problem, bur burping and belching after meals, or Oftentimes I see this go hand in hand with excessive fullness after meals, postprandial fullness. What I think is happening is some combination of insufficient stomach acid. So if, if you don't have enough stomach acid, then the food is not gonna get properly broken down and it's gonna have to stay in the stomach for a lot longer and it's gonna hang out and start to putrefy and do all sorts of weird funky things in order to just try to get digested and broken down. So A, I think that low stomach acid is a big contributor to this problem. Also, you could look at this as being related to motility, which is my favorite topic ever, as you know, but the coordination of the swallowing, the opening of the sphincter, the closing of the sphincter, the mushing of the stomach contents, stomach emptying, which is a type of motility, the opening of the pyloric sphincter, the closing of the sphincter, all of that and the movement of the food through the small bowel, all of that that I just described, all of that movement of the food and the chyme is a type of motility. So it's not coincidental that if you look up the symptoms of low stomach acid and you also look up the symptoms of delayed gastric emptying or something like gastroparesis, the symptoms are very, very similar. Now gastroparesis would be more severe certainly but they all kind of mishmash together. And I think it's somewhere in the crossroads of insufficient stomach acid and poor motility. So the good news is knowing that now, you know that you can tackle one or both of those things and you could probably see the symptom largely dissipate. And I'll share with you guys, um, it was during the pandemic but I don't remember when, I think it was like middle or late 2020 out of the blue, for no apparent reason, unbeknownst to me, I just started having this problem. All of a sudden, I just started burping and having like trapped gas in my stomach after meals. And it was very annoying and very curious. And I kind of was walking around and I was like doing this to myself a lot, like kind of banging on my chest, trying to get the gas bubbles to loosen up and, and release. Um, my daughter had one of those little mini trampoline, rebounding trampolines at the house at the time. And I was finding myself getting on her trampoline 
and trying to jostle the gas bubbles. And then I would have a great big burp and I would feel better for like a nanosecond. And then the gas buildup would start again. And I was so annoyed. And I was like, what the devil is going on? And this persisted for at least a week or two, if not three. And I just, I kind of observed it. I was getting annoyed by it, but I observed it. And I thought, gosh, this is really bizarre. And I hadn't changed my diet. I hadn't started any new medication. I wasn't under any new stress. I mean, like the world was falling apart, right? But it wasn't early in 2020. Like the world had been falling apart for a while at that point. It wasn't like I had a new stressor. So I was scratching my head and I was wondering what on earth was going on. So I decided to practice what I preach. And I, you know, being who I am, I, I went and got a prokinetic from my office. And I started taking that prokinetic supplement and I kid you not, within a day or two or three, the symptom totally resolved and I was fine. And then I maybe took that prokinetic for only like a week or two and I was able to discontinue it and the symptom never came back again. So it was like, I just needed to give my motility just that little like scootaloo, like, all right guys, come on, do your job. And my body was like, oh, okay, yeah, we got it, we got it, we, we're good, we're good. And I've been fine ever since. This is, you know, two, two years later at this point. Um, so I know I'm an N equals one, but again, this problem came out of nowhere. I remedied it with a prokinetic and it has never come back. Um, now granted, I'd only had this symptom for like a week or two at that point. People who have had this going on for months or years might need longer term prokinetic supplementation. And you might need a lot more like gut brain axis work and a lot more like attention to stomach acid and chewing and mindful eating. You might really need to dive into this a bit more deeper, a bit deeper than I did. But again, just N equals one, prokinetics really helped me. And similarly, I have seen prokinetics and betaine HCL supplements and mindful eating practices all help mitigate this symptom in people who deal with this on a regular basis. So again, kind of brief overview. Think about motility in the sense of the coordination of all of these muscles and sphincters and food moving through the digestive system at the appropriate pace. So motility, super important. Uh, HCL, stomach acid, also very important. And I have hypothesized for a while, and I talk about a lot in FODMAP Freedom, that I think stomach acid is necessary for motility, particularly in the small bowel. And I think it's necessary for proper stomach emptying, which again is a type of motility. So definitely consider addressing low stomach acid if there's a possibility that you have that going on. And also remember that when we talk about motility, we can start thinking about gut brain axis type work, things like vagal tone and vagus nerve stimulation. And we can start really thinking about things like stress management and sleep and nervous system health as it pertains to motility, as it pertains to this symptom. And the added bonus is that both of these things, motility work and HCL support, are both gonna be helpful for other conditions, including IBS and SIBO. So wouldn't it be nice if you had a nice, easy twofer or threefer, and you were able to treat this annoying symptom and presumably some other more severe symptoms that you're struggling with that brought you to my channel in the first place. So go forth enjoy the prokinetics. If you don't know what a prokinetic is, or you want to know which one is the best, which one you should do, check out other videos on my channel. I've got a bunch of them about different prokinetics. I'm also going to do an updated prokinetic video in the future about which one is coming out on top in my research on the topic with patients and students. So stay tuned for that sometime in the spring. But in the meantime, go forth, enjoy your prokinetics, try to tone your vagus nerve and see if you can do a little bit more mindful eating. And I really think that this annoying symptom will be a thing of the past for you. Hey guys, if you like this video, be sure to subscribe, ring the bell, click the like button and leave a comment down below with the videos that you would like to see me do next. Doing all of those really helps support the channel and support my efforts in making as many videos as possible for you guys. Thanks so much and I'll see you in the next video.